All right, so the very last thing here to talk about is coronary blood flow and autoregulation. So remember what I said, the left ventricle in particular is gonna get the majority of its perfusion in diastole because that's where the pressure is the highest. It's gonna come in in diastole. Whereas most organs of the body, the blood is gonna get perfused to that tissue, usually in systole. So most organs of the body, if not all the organs of the body, are gonna get supplied during systole, okay? So that's the major difference between the coronary, between the actual blood vessels supplying the heart and the rest of the tissues. Now the oxygen extraction at the level of the heart, right? these coronary blood vessels that are supplying the heart, they're going to have significant amounts of oxygen extraction. So in other words, I'm gonna have much higher levels of deoxygenation once the blood gets through the coronary circulation. The heart requires very, very high levels of oxygen. These really high myocardial oxygen requirements are gonna cause there to be pretty significant levels of deoxygenation by the time the blood gets through the heart and back to the coronary sinus. Remember, almost all of the coronary uh, blood vessels are going to drain into the coronary sinus, which is going to drain into the right atria. So the concept is, if there's significant oxygen extraction in myocardial tissues, much greater than other organs of the body, what happens when I start exercising, for example? When I start exercising, I'm gonna have higher oxygen demand at the level of the heart. If I'm already taking so much oxygen, such a high percentage of oxygen from the coronary vessels, how do I get even more oxygen when I'm you know, doing activity, for example, or when I'm running? That's where the only thing that we can do, we can't give more oxygen because we're already taking such a high percentage. Instead, we have to vasodilate the coronary vessels. So that's how we compensate for exercise. We dilate the coronary vessels, specifically using adenosine and nitric oxide. So for example, if I have higher oxygen requirements, if I'm exercising or uh, if I have uh, atherosclerosis, for example, I'm gonna have higher oxygen demand at that time. And in this regard, I'm going to be using up all of the available oxygen, okay? And so what's gonna happen is I don't have enough oxygen to meet the demand. And so I'm gonna have less ATP than needed to meet my metabolic requirement at that time. Remember, adenosine triphosphate. Now, what do we use to make adenosine triphosphate? We're gonna use adenosine, okay? And then I also need my terminal electron acceptor. I need oxygen, okay? Now, I have the adenosine, but I don't have the oxygen. So my adenosine will build up, okay? And I need more ATP. And so this adenosine, as it builds up, it will help cause coronary vasodilation. So I can get more blood to these areas of the heart, these regions of the heart, and that blood is oxygenated carrying oxygen. And then this oxygen will eventually allow me to form more ATP. That's the concept. So adenosine is a coronary vasodilator. Nitric oxide is also gonna be a dilator of uh, venous and arterial circulation. And these are local mediators. Okay, so this is all happening relatively locally, especially during exercise. And so the nitric oxide is primarily gonna be working on the coronary uh, arterial vessels. Again, the concept is at baseline, we're using very significant amounts of oxygen extraction. And so when I exercise, when I have atherosclerosis and I can't meet my myocardial oxygen demand, what I'm gonna do is vasodilate. You can imagine someone who's a marathon runner, right? This is no problem. They vasodilate, they meet their requirements. When they're done running, the oxygen demand drops and they're fine, right? They don't need to continue vasodilating. But someone that has atherosclerosis, right? They're always gonna have stenosis. They're always gonna have a deficit in oxygen demand to some degree. And so these patients are gonna be undergoing coronary vasodilation permanently, essentially. Okay, and that's why when they exercise, patients that have atherosclerosis in the heart, when they exercise, they're going to have chest pain. They're going to have ischemia because now they're already at baseline. They have increased oxygen demand. Now the oxygen demand when they exercise is going to be through the roof, but they're already maximally dilated and they're already significantly extracting oxygen. There's nothing else they can do, right? So that's the concept. That's why people that have uh, ischemic heart disease or atherosclerosis in the coronary vessels, they're vasodilated at baseline. And I'll talk a lot more about this with steel phenomena and stress tests when we go through the angina lecture.